Are you struggling to pass the CPA exam? Did your review course fail to fit your learning style? I'm Darius Clark of I-75 CPA Review, the number one course supplement, where the right teacher makes all the difference. So what do you have to know about a business impact analysis? So a BIA identifies business processes necessary to functioning in a disaster and determines how soon those business processes should be recovered. The BIA helps determine the criticality of business activities. That means business functions are ranked from most critical to least critical. And the company needs to get familiar with the resource requirements necessary to ensure operational resilience and continuity of operations during and after a business disruption. So a BIA focuses on critical business functions, helps with prioritization of continuity challenges, and ensures acceptable recovery time after an event occurs. So how are businesses impacted by these events? Well, they could have a loss of one or more business function, which leads to a loss of revenue, or maybe an increase in expenses and having to buy emergency equipment and maybe leasing a new space. There could be regulatory fines and other sanctions if it turned out that the event caused confidential information to be released publicly. There could be regulatory fines and other sanctions. There could be a cost of litigation if you had to breach a contract that involved your system not being available in the time that you promised under contract. And all this would lead to a loss of confidence by your customers, by investors. So an important step in a business impact analysis is to identify critical business functions. These are your processes that are required for business operation. Critical business functions would likely include sales order processing, shipping, supply chain management, payroll, and it would vary by industry. In some industries, there are functions required for statutory and regulatory compliance. So even if there's business interruption in the healthcare industry, a hospital still has the requirement to continue patient care. So what are these critical business functions and how do they rank against one another? Because immediate recovery is the most desirable when an event occurs, but that's the most expensive. Immediate recovery typically requires setting up a mirrored hot site with current data. With a mirrored hot site, in the event of an incident, if the primary location goes offline or is destroyed, the mirrored site takes over where the first system stopped. An e-commerce site often uses mirrored hot sites for backup, so Amazon would have that. If you don't have a mirrored hot site, though, there's going to be a lag in the time it takes between an event occurring and the business being able to at least operate at some capacity. Here's a question. A company conducts a business impact analysis for which of the following reasons? A, to prioritize continuity challenges. Yes. B, to focus on critical business functions and ensure acceptable recovery times. And both of these are correct. And if you recall, a business impact analysis helps with prioritization of continuity challenges and ensures acceptable recovery time. Now the exam is going to expect you to know some key terms regarding a business impact analysis. And the first one here is maximum tolerable downtime. Maximum tolerable downtime is the maximum amount of time that a business function can be down before the business experiences substantial losses from which it might not be able to fully recover. Is that a certain number of hours, a certain number of days? The business must be able to determine that. The maximum tolerable downtime, or MTD. Another big term is recovery point objective, RPO. In the immediate aftermath of a failure, the RPO is minimum operational capability. That's the goal. So if there's been failure, we got to at least be able to get to minimum operational capability why not full function capability? Well, we could if we had a mirrored hot site, but there's likely to be some data loss if we don't have that mirrored hot site. There'll be data loss between the time the last backup was successfully generated 
and the time that the incident occurs. So if we're relying on just incremental backups, if we only back up once per week, you might have up to seven days of data loss if your most recent backup was a full seven days before the critical event took place. You'll have three days of data loss if your event occurred three days after the last backup. So to answer the question, what's your recovery point objective? It's the amount of data that the organization can afford to lose. Here's two more very important terms in a business impact analysis. Recovery time objective and work recovery time. Recovery time objective, RTO, is different than what we just saw, recovery point objective, RPO. The recovery time objective, how quickly a business function can recover after an incident occurs. The recovery time objective includes time required to reinstall the system, restore data from current backup, that's your RPO point, your recovery point objective, that point of minimum functionality. The RTO, recovery time objective, is the time it takes to achieve the RPO, recovery point objective. Then what's work recovery time? Well, how long it takes the business to re-enter information that were lost due to the age of the restored backup, that's referred to as the work recovery time. Work recovery time is the time from the minimum operational capability that was restored at the recovery time objective to full functional operation. And at the end of the WRT, the business functions are finally fully restored. So in the event of a disaster, the recovery time objective gets us to the recovery point objective, but we're not at full functional operation. We're only at minimum operation because the loss just occurred and we don't have a full mirrored hot site. So there's been some data loss. Then work recovery time, how long it takes the business to re-enter that information that we no longer have in the system due to the age of the restored backup. By the end of the work recovery time, that's when the business functions are finally fully restored. Let's take a look at a timeline. From left to right, we have normal operations here all the way until we have a failure here. This time between normal operations here and failure over here is known as the mean time before failure, MTBF. This is just an estimate of how long a system will operate before it fails. We got everything functioning normally, but we estimate that there might be a failure at some point, and here's the failure. So now we're at the position of the failure here, and we have an incident response team within the company trying to return the system and data to the RPO point, which is the recovery point objective, and we're doing that during the recovery time objective. So we wanna to get to the recovery point objective and we have this recovery time objective to get us there. The RTO, recovery time objective, is the time it takes to achieve the RPO, recovery point objective. At this yellow point here, we can at least have minimum functioning capabilities. Once we get to this yellow circle, the recovery point objective, we're at least up and running with minimum capabilities, we're breathing a little easier, we're making sales again, we're once again able to support customers, but are we at full function recovery? Not yet. What has to happen? WRT, work recovery time. We're still on the yellow recovery point objective because the initial recovery of a system and restoration of backups does not usually provide full business functionality but the combined time represented by the RTO and WRT, that's gonna bring us to full function recovery. And that combined time of recovery time objective and work recovery time, that should fall within the maximum tolerable downtime. And you can see up here how the maximum tolerable downtime is the sum of the recovery time objective and the work recovery time. What kind of questions might they ask? According to the business impact analysis, when failure occurs, the incident response team should be capable of returning the system to which of the following during the recovery time objective. 
Is it A, the recovery point objective? Yeah, I think so. B, normal operations with no missing data? Well, no, they didn't tell us that they had a mirrored hot site, so we can't expect that failure occurs and you have normal operations with no missing data unless you see that they have a mirrored hot site. C, full function recovery? No, first you gotta get to the recovery point objective, then with the work recovery time, you'll get to full function recovery. And D, mean time between failures, what's that? That's the time in between everything's running normally and that the failure occurs. Here they're saying, after the failure occurs, the incident response team should be capable of returning the system to which of the following? The answer is A, recovery point objective. Because when failure occurs, the incident response team should be capable of returning the system and data to the recovery point objective during the recovery time objective. So it tells us failure occurs and then recovery time objective is to get us to the recovery point objective. Recovery time objective does not bring us to full function recovery. Let's go with A. According to a business impact analysis, the time it takes for the business to re-enter information that were lost due to the age of the restored backup is known as what? And if you think you know, leave me the answer in the comments section. And then don't forget to like and subscribe because it helps the channel out a lot. And if you need more, go to cpaexamtutoring.com. Get yourself on I-75 with me, Darius Clark, because the right teacher makes all the difference. Get on I-75 and be home soon.